weeks ago, he took a leisurely saunter up Rivington Pike. Well, Collins just returned from a brisk jaunt to Holcombe Hill near Ramsbottom in East Lancashire. He's also planning to take a look at Darren Tower in the near future, but first to Holcombe and its Peel Tower. Why a Peel Tower? Well, one local writer has his own poetic explanation, with apologies to Stanley Holloway. There's a famous inland town called Ramsbottom that's noted for hail, snow and rain. And Mr and Mrs Blackpool went there with their child, Mary Jane. The grandsons they didn't think greatly, and the market were fiddling and small. No pictures or similar amusements, packed out for them to do at all. Then they saw a tower on Thillside and inquired of its nature and name. They were told they were called Tower of Ulcombe and the name of the village to its same. Now it happened to lift her a ballroom, no organ for Reggie to play, no aquarium for fishes to swim in, just a box for visitors to pay. So feeling bored and adventurous, they decided to climb to the top. Mary Jane said she'd count every stairway, but at 509 had to stop. They'd not quite conquered the summit when a terrible occurrence occurred. Mother uttered in a loud profanation, rather muttered a four-letter word. For a fella in front with a banana had peeled it without due concern, leaving skin on staircase just waiting, a lesson for someone to learn. Mary Jane, in her haste and impatience, stepped right on the skin of that fruit and let out a scream and fell headlong, and a pigeon nearby gave a hoot. Her neck it were broke in three places, Holcomb, Rams, Bottom and Wood A, where she died without regaining conscience. What a terrible end to the day. Mum and Dad seeking some compensation, said the tower they'd have to rename in remembrance of this sad occasion, the death of the child, Mary Jane. Let's name tower after its skin at banana, what made her fall head over heel. And so it were duly amended. The tower were named after it peel. Ken Craven, a writer who's interested in local history and obviously something of a poet, composed that fanciful explanation of how Peel Tower got its name. But as we made the climb up Holcombe Hill at a brisk pace, it takes about half an hour, by the way, Ken revealed the real reasons for the building of the tower. The tower was, in fact, built um, in, in memory of Sir Robert Peel, uh, who was a local boy, born in Berry, which is just a few miles away. Um, Robert Peel died in 1850 and this monument was opened in 1852. The tower was built of millstone grit from a nearby quarry. It cost about a thousand pounds and the money was raised by public subscription. For years, it's been a focal point for walkers and the scene of many large gatherings, notably a regular religious service each Good Friday. But in the early 50s, the tower suffered a major setback. Originally, there was a wooden staircase which uh, was set on fire. Uh, then that was replaced by another staircase, but um, just through neglect and wear and tear and the years and the elements up here, um, it became unsafe and had to be closed. Uh, but it was decided to spend some money and reopen it. And as I say, this happened in uh, 1985. And so finally to the top of the 128 feet of Peel Tower, sitting on top of Holcombe Hill itself, more than 1,100 feet above sea level. It's a bit of a hazy day today. You can't see that far, although on a clear day, you can see to Blackpool Tower, to Pendle Hill, and even to Snowdonia. But this walk to the top of Holcombe Hill is, in fact, only one of a number of fine walks that can be done on this particular section of the West Pennine Moors. The West Pennine Moors are a conservation area and there are many, many walks to be done. The 36-mile Peel Trail takes in many of the best points, north, south, east and west of the tower itself. But there's one particular area in the immediate vicinity of Holcombe Hill which is arousing particular attention at present. Since the early part of the century, the army has had a training range on Holcombe Moor. Now it says it must have extra training land, but walkers and local residents have mounted a vociferous campaign against the plans of the military. You've got 900 acres of 
open moorland with free access. You can go along level walks, quite firm tracks, or you can strike out freely over the moor. It can be wet, it's not exceptionally bad to walk on. There are only certain times of the year that it might be really wet. Uh, and down to the right here, you've open woodland, open pastures, all free, easy walking, um, not difficult at all. All age groups go there from pensioners and young people as well. It's, it's quite straightforward. And the marvellous thing is that it's so close to the houses and the residential areas of Green Mountain Holcombe Brook. But whatever the outcome of that particular argument, people will no doubt still flock to the general area around Holcombe Hill in search of a reasonably easy but rewarding walk. Triple tongue in the air with Colin Philpot of Holcomb.